this is uh, an exciting time because I, I don't think that we had too many open source projects that were use case specific that have lived on and continued to grow in adoption over uh, time, over a 20 year time span. So I'll tell you now about me. So my name is Marcus Egan. Uh, I work at MongoDB as a senior product manager of Atlas Search, which is actually Lucene under the hood. We and, and some fancy syntactic sugar on top and some management capabilities that runs in the cloud. But uh, before that, I worked at Lucidworks and before, you know, just for many years, I have been hacking on Lucene, Solar, and Elasticsearch. Uh, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. And, and why I care is really about, uh, you know, there's not everybody can afford to pay for an expensive proprietary search engine. And, you know, these technologies are free. Um, you can, you know, you can see the code too. So that's also nice so you can understand. And I think that it's just really important for our world to have free open source software available so you can innovate quickly and build uh, new products and, and companies, but especially search because that's how you find things. So I'm gonna talk about, I'm not gonna talk any more about myself really. Uh, there's a few other slides, but uh, later. I'm gonna talk about the Lucene history that I know about and also the goals of to maintain, improve, and extend uh, an open source project so that it survives. So I think a lot of people here know about Doug Cutting. Uh, Doug Cutting was, you know, he's been interested in search and working on search since the year I was born, 1989. And he, saw search as being the simplest access pattern uh, for people getting the information they're looking for. Like he was thinking about search before the web and he, this picture that you see here is actually, I think that's the Hadoop stuffed animal. So you have worked on a lot. You probably have some exposure to many of his projects in your life. Uh, so he he wrote two search engines at Xerox Park. He wrote one at Apple uh, V Twin Engine, a still in Mac OS ten, I believe. Someone can correct me if that's not accurate. And he worked on another one at Excite. Now Lucene was his fifth search engine, and. Uh, he, I, I read a comment about how he goes to an app, like many applications today, and he's like, I wonder if they're running Lucene. Uh, they probably are. So this is a paper that sort of like the, the, the theoretical underpinnings, if you will, of search. So I, it, it, I think it's an interesting paper for everyone to read. It's just an object-oriented architecture for text retrieval, but this is like published early 90s, maybe 91. Uh, so I'm here talking about, you know, 20 years of Lucene in the future. This is 10 years prior to Lucene. He was writing about these things, thinking through them and, and working on them with, you know, various colleagues. This looks like Xerox, Xerox Park, so close to my old house. And this, uh, this is, like a lineage of, this is like a little timeline of the early days of Apache Lucene, which are really interesting and could be a book or a movie. <laughs> so Lucene joins Apache Jakarta. It was initially on SourceForge, but Doug and his benevolence, they donated to Apache Jakarta, which was really 
an important moment for the project, I feel, because corporations today, I mean, they recognize the Apache brand for sure. Uh, they know that they that companies can build reliably on it and they know that they can trust it's going to have the scrutiny uh, and the commitment of, of several other companies. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy is <laughs> you trust the project because you have people working on it. So now you're working on it. And sometimes companies have to deal with bugs that aren't necessarily their problem, but it just as a part of the overall project. Then in 2010, something else really interesting happened, which, you know, to my limited knowledge is sort of unprecedented, but also very important. Apache and Lucene, I mean, Apache Lucene and Apache Solar merged. So solar is like a, the easiest way to describe it is, well, there's an acronym. It, it, it is, but really is an HTTP library for, for Lucene. It's like, and, and some replication. Uh, but it's, uh, was very common to use Lucene prior to solar and then build all this plumbing to connect with it. So it, it was a little inaccessible for some people, uh, but solar made it simpler, gave you a server. And that came out in 2007 out of CNET. Uh, it, they, when they merged, everybody working on Lucene was also now working on solar and everybody working on solar was now working on Lucene. So you got uh, like a lot of power uh, and, and that collaboration. And that went on for about, or I guess, 11 years. Uh, and this year, they it started last year in the email list. There was discussion about if, if they should split. All the committers had a vote. I think they needed a quorum. Maybe, I don't know if everyone voted, but most people did. And uh, Apache Lucene basically agreed to split from solar which I thought was interesting. I had my own opinions on the matter. Um, I'm a big fan of, of both, but they are fundamentally different projects. And so it made sense because every time you made a change in one, that change was also forced into the other, even if it wasn't necessarily the right path. Uh, so, that was a big deal, but I still think it's the early days. I, I think, you know, 20 years from today, uh, there's going to be a lot different about the project. And I, I'll share some of that in a, in a bit here. So, and this is just like my standard Apache Lucene slide, which is just like Doug donated it. Uh, but the, the, the key thing that I wanted to, to point out, the two ideas is that like, this is where a lot of academic research actually gets exposed to the commercial world or like uh, the civilian public or like the non-researching public. I mean, it, it, it's amazing. There's, a, there's some academics who are committers or, or contributors to the project. And I think that's, they, they help facilitate that, but, it's also just the cutting edge. And this project has surfaced several bugs in Java, which I think uh, Uwe Schindler, a committer in Germany, just spoke to. Uh, and I think it's because it pushes the limits of scale. Now, this is what maintenance is like uh, in, in solar and Lucene and open source in general. I mean, everybody's going in their own direction. They don't follow commands. Then you have Jira. I, I, this is the newest addition to the to this presentation uh, because I, I I saw this. One of my colleagues s sent this over, and I I love it. This is so true in Apache. Hail Jira! <laughs> like if you close one Jira, another two will open. Uh, and this is an important part of the process, and and, and maintaining and uh, and like facilitating success in open source is like. Before you open a JIRA for the Lucene project or the solar project, they, they say start with the mailing list because, I mean, there's, we're already, we have so many JIRAs in those projects. So start with the mailing list, kind of validate if it's uh, worthy of further investigation. 
And then we'll, if, if it passes that gate, then if it gets through that gate, then you can open a Jira because we don't want more Jiras. And I think in the early days, the, the email list was vital. And I've read, you can, a lot of it's public. I've read a lot of these early conversations uh, and Doug was really helping uh, a lot of people get up and running with uh, with Lucene. So that I think that's also really cool. Uh, it's like 20 years. I don't know if he's still answering questions, but he's like leveled up so many other people that, you know, I think he can, if he wanted to, he could step back. I think he's doing other things probably now, probably writing the next search engine. Uh, and then there's this other issue, which is, uh with maintenance is like what makes sense to us today won't necessarily make sense to a new group or new generation of engineers working on the project in the future okay and so the ietf they they recommended that we stop using like slave to describe relationships between servers and a distributed system. And so many projects that are starting up today and books and, and, and lessons and courses and tutorials, they're not going to be talking about masters and slaves, which to me didn't make sense in the beginning. <laughs> but I got, you know, it, it was a technical term. It is a technical term, an archaic technical term, but, you know, languages evolve and, and strive to improve. Uh, and so an important part in the maintenance is making sure that people who come in with this new frame of reference can look at the code and understand what's going on. Uh, and, and, and so that's what this, uh, this pull request was about. It, it says remove oppressive language, but it's really about clarity. The, uh, then there's another, another, important aspect of open source which i think you know it is it's of arguable importance to some but again it's it's about uh the frame of reference that newcomers have and i really like a project when i see a a, a red failed as in like the build failed because that means they're doing something you know like maybe not all the branches say failed but if there's one that's failing, it's like they're on the cutting edge. They are breaking stuff. And, and so that's exciting. Even if it's passing, I'm good with it. I just want to know, like I land on a project, they have continuous integration uh, infrastructure to support it. Someone's donated it. In the case of Apache, Apache provides the infrastructure. But I think this is, it, it is an overlooked um, item for for many projects and it, it's it's important some projects are too complex to do this too i recognize that i i've looked into the, this in a couple areas but i think the the build badge is is helpful and also should it links to the the project's ci so if you want to see you know how some of these things are set up that's also uh pretty helpful so th this one i think we added in 2019 so another important part of the maintenance is the project health continually monitoring it. And so this is, uh, I think Mike McCandless put together these graphs. There's a ton of them. Uh, and it's just the analyzer performance over time. You can see corresponding to commits uh, and, and, and merges, like what, what is the performance delta uh, for some of the benchmarks that have been running for years? Uh, and then on the improvement side, I'm going to try to fly through my time timers. On the improvement side, the, the principal goal of an engineer is to simplify. Uh, and I have heard this time and time again from Eric Hatcher, who, I mean, he, he's the author, co-author of Lucene in Action, which is still the most widely read book on Lucene. I recommend it for everyone. He also co-founded LucaWorks and he's a brother from another mother. So, you know, he's helped me so much and thinking about what my role is or what one's role can be in an open source project. And I think that it's really important 
for Lucene and many other projects out there to know, I mean, to, to encourage people to help in the ways that they can, uh, because there's a lot to do always. And it's not always about features. Uh, it's sometimes just about a step up, a little, a marginal improvement uh, or removing technical debt. Uh, and so like one of those improvements that, that, that I have been just tasking myself with, like no one else has asked me to do this. I just, I want to do this because I care immensely about the project. Uh, I mean, I am em also employed because I care about the project, but it's like, what I, I noticed that there are some challenges to the security uh, or like people's perception of the security of these projects uh, of solar and Lucene. And so I try to, to beat that back every chance I get whenever I run into something that is like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Or, you know, somebody's red team is going to flag this or whatever, or someone who doesn't, who is confused will, will complain about it, or this does pose a real issue. And so, you know, just have to step in and, and, and work through it. And so I don't always know how to fix things, but, uh, I've had a lot of help. I like for this one, I think I got a lot of help from Jan Hoidel, these, both of these, and this one, adding the security manager, I got help from Robert Muir. And this one, I got help from Houston Putman. And these people all work in different places and they're all over the world. So like we all, but we all have to pitch in and that's just a really important part about open sources. Like do not, we cannot allow our software to be less secure. We're more secure because we're open. Uh, and you know, I filed bugs in the past. I, I've had to deal with incident response to for solar. And so, uh, yeah, I think this is this is really important. And like we want to improve the the relevancy, right? So uh, we have to to go to the next level, uh, which is, you know, for some use cases, approximate nearest vector search. And this, I think Mike Sokolov wrote this and and he's partnered with a bunch of people in, in Amazon and elsewhere. And I think this is just really a testament to the power of open source. Like all these companies, all these people are working on this. They have different needs and they're investing and it's, it's going to be available to everyone. And I, I'm pretty sure it'll be more robust and more available than any proprietary option out there because it's hard to, to stop the collaborative power of all these people in open source. So I think it's really having the vector search is just a testament to, to that. And the next big thing is an interesting project, which I, I think that'll be a part of my book if I ever write a book on this uh, community, is like, while the vector search is, so that's landed, that's in Maine, people are working on it, there's still some things to work out, and this is not, this is 9.0, so it's not released yet. There's also the reference implementation of Solar, which aims to remove a lot of bottlenecks, some of the limitations of the distributed design. Uh, probably on the query side and indexing and, and especially testing. Uh, there's a lot of flaky tests in solar. Mark Miller is introducing lots of speed ups and he's working with his, some of his colleagues at Apple and uh, some people not at Apple, like e Ishan and Noble to, to bring this to the world, uh, the solar world. And these are happening in parallel, uh, vector search and the reference implementation. So. This is uh, really exciting stuff. I recommend that you, you know, check out this ticket when you like, get a chance. Uh, there's a lot of comedy. I won't leave it up for too long, but uh, I think that this is just another testament to, you know, all the collaborative power that goes into open source and all the uh, companies investing in it. And the policemen, I think, the policeman is Uwe. I, I'm not sure. Maybe it's automated, but it's somebody. I think it's Uwe. And, and these are these are some of the tickets that are, are available. So 
if you want to pitch in and try to help with these, <laughs> they're all in that ticket. So you can go ahead. Uh, this is Clara's spirit. Now, this is uh, what I, when I was, oh, I'm running out of time. So when I was going through this, I was trying to get through that first portion in 20 minutes. But this is probably the most important part of, of this talk, which is like the special thank yous. And these thank yous are, are really to people who have through their direct actions or indirect actions or collaborative spirit uh, have, have made this project so robust. So Nina, and Plain Schwartz put on the conference. Yannick Seeley donated solar to Apache. He could have asked CNET if he could spin it out and to a proprietary project that no one could ever see, then it probably never would be as important or ubiquitous as it is today. And Elastic, I think that, you know, they built a pretty big company only on open source for a while, you know, they uh, a pretty wide reach and, and so I, I'm grateful to them. I don't know all of them, but I do know a couple of them. So I shouted them out. Um, and then these are, so Eric Hatcher and Shalin Manger, they've been, they've been helping me on such a deep level. Just like, I mean, I went from zero to a hundred real quick <laughs> and, or 99. And I learned, I learned every day from, from Eric, he's a wizard. Mike Sokolov and McCamless, they work at Amazon. Uh, and, you know, people use, that's one of the most widely used search engines in the world. Uh, and they're pushing the boundaries in their team. I think Greg Miller, they, I've seen some really awesome stuff come out of that team recently. Uh, and Jan Hoy, though, oh, Tim Potter, Eric Erickson. So they used to work with me at LucyWorks, but... And I think Eric is retired and he's still working on Lucene and solar from time to time, just volunteering uh, and his commitment to open source and just, you know, kind of helping me a little bit when I was first getting going has been really helpful. He knows a lot about this, about search and Tim Potter is, yeah, I mean, he's also a wizard and Jan Hoido and Robert Muir. I mean, you can look and see what they've, added to the product so much. Mike uh, Mike Drobe, Kevin Risden, Noble Paul, Tomas, Eduardo Fernandez Loeb, Ishan, uh I Chato Padye. I don't I don't want to mispronounce it, but he helps me a lot too still today. All these people, Tomas helped me with the backporting of uh removing the oppressive language, which really is is helpful that it's inclusive. But I mean, I care more about it being uh, maintainable and reliable, uh, ultimately. Uh, but it also does matter that it, you know, we shouldn't be calling server slaves in 2021. So, uh, and then these are other people. It's just like there's a bunch of people out there that that help this project, and so I think we should recognize these people and open source more outwardly, like like. Like, for example, Jaron Glover, he was a DevOps engineer, early DevOps engineer at a fintech company in, in my neighborhood. But he's like encouraging me. He's like, please fix this. Please fix that. Uh, and he's like checking in. He's like, let me see the PR. Like, may, you know, let's work on, on, on this stuff. Uh, let's dig into this. And, and so I think having those people in the background are important. Uh, David Smiley is also that way, I mean, he is a, another wizard. He could belong in the wizard column on the previous side too. He uh, really pushing the boundaries of, of what's possible at Salesforce. And he is a a, a frequent contributor uh, to and a committer to Solar and Lucene. Joel Bernstein, I worked with him at LucyWorks. He taught me some wizardry. Uh, he knows a lot. Houston Pup, Putman, uh, uh, he has pushed the boundaries too. So. Uh, he was working on a Kubernetes operator. I was trying to do away with Zookeeper just as a test. And so our paths collided on that, I think, a few years ago around etcd and kube. 
But yeah, he's great. And then Aaliyah Abbott was like at LusaWorks putting on all the conferences and, and like really fostering an environment for developers to work. And, and I think that was really important. Like the Lucene Revolution Conference was a, a little more important than people knew. And it's called Activate Now is a little more important than people might recognize today, but it's hard to get a bunch of people strongly minded, strongly opinionated engineers together to talk about code. Uh, and then Will Hayes, he he like recru he recruited me to Lucidworks, uh, which was a blessing because I love search and I love open source. And I finally got to devote a lot more time to, to solar and, and Vivek Sriram was like, He's kind of like Jaron, but also was my boss, just like in my ear about doing certain things and, and prioritizing things. Uh, and he's the CMO uh, at LucyWorks. And then Cord and Grandma Joanne. So these are like the my mentors of life. Cord Campbell, he, he's like, shake trees. Go into the solar community and shake more trees uh, or any community. And so that's what, that's what I'm committed to doing is like, shaking trees, uh, trying to get an apple that's ripe to drop. And there's no apple riper than Apache Lucene right now uh, to me because it's search is the most common access pattern uh, to data, to information in the world. You don't type in a domain these days, you type in a search query. You don't always, you know, a database is for, uh, a database is for, when you know exactly what you're looking for, uh, a search engine is for when you're open to recommendations. So have an open mind, have an open source search engine. Thank you. Uh, Lauren Schaeffer, um, she asks, uh, what would you recommend for people who want to start contributing to Lucene? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, if you want to start contributing to Lucene, I would say start using Lucene. <laughs> that's never like that. That's the, the easiest way. That's how, that's certainly how I got interested in it and involved mm -hmm. in it is like trying to use it. Um, and then once you start using it, then start building it. And then once you start building it, uh, then start customizing it. And then once you start customizing, you land on something good, then you maybe make a proposal or once you start using it, you'll run into an issue or once you start building it, you'll run into an issue and, and then you can open a PR like, and I'm, I typically like I'm running solar at all times, like at my house. Uh, and now I'm starting to run Lucene on my work laptop a lot. And I just, I'm looking in a particular, in a very focused area most of the time like uh, and so or a, a couple areas uh but i think i think that's that's a good way to focus it's it's too much to take on all at once you know so yeah okay so start start focused and and play around with it use it yeah use it and then build it some people go to start start building it first from mm -hmm. source rather but because I mean, you're already using it, right? Like if you're on Wikipedia, you're using it. <laughs> if you're <laughs> if you're searching on Amazon ever, you're using it. If you're calling an Uber, you're using it. Like it's all around you. 